Alrighty, calibration curves. Well, this is strange because twice the calibration curve has come up in this unit. So there's the atomic absorption spectrophotometer. Let me just clean this diagram up from the previous video. And you'll see that as the light comes in, it gets uh, absorbed by the chemicals. And so a faint array of light comes out. And that's called absorbance. That seems to make sense. And you think it would be quite straightforward. All you'd have to do is measure the intensity of the light coming into the flame. And that's traditionally called I sub zero. And compare that to the intensity of the light that makes it through the other side of the flame. And that's normally called just I. But this is chemistry and it isn't quite as simple as that. Almost as simple as that. Now the equation uh, that we're doing here is in the data booklet, but you do need to log it. You need to do the log of those numbers. And the equation will continue because it also equals E, L, and C. So let's take one of those at a time. Let's go backwards. C is the concentration of the chemical that you're shooting through the machine. L is the path length, the length that the light has to travel through that flame. And E, well, that, confusingly, is the molar absorptivity coefficient. Oof. So hopefully they'll just give you that. Or they'll give you the other numbers and you can work it out. It is, of course, a constant. Oh, nothing's ever that simple either, is it? It's a constant for a certain chemical, a certain element, at a certain frequency. So it's only a constant as long as you don't change the element or the frequency of light. So let's look at ye merry calibration curve. So I've set up all my apparatus and I'm going to measure the absorbance of the light versus the concentration of uh, the element that I'm looking for. So I'll have a sample with 10 and I'll measure the absorbance, one with 20, one with 30. These are just arbitrary numbers. You can have whatever concentrations you like. And you've got to plot a graph of absorbance versus concentration. Now you might notice, if you do a, a concentrated enough solution, that it's going to be a curve there. And the IB wants you to know that the straight part of the line is the most reliable. So that's the part you should be able to use. Once it curves round, that's going to be less reliable data that, you, that you're going to get there. So I'm going to draw two lines on here. So what was the question? Mm -hmm. So the question is, if I have an absorbance of 0.2, what was the concentration of the element in my solution? And it looks like it comes out about 13 milligrams per decimeter cubed. And the IB continues.